And what really fed it was international indifference as well. Uh, people in the international community said some of the right words. How are you going to ensure that Assad is, is out? Uh, how are you going to support the, 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 the protest movement? There was no real policy of support. Uh, there were only talk of sympathy and words of sympathy, occasional words of sympathy. And, um, and that, in, in, in due course of time, made people feel that they are abandoned uh, and that no one really cares. And at the same time, it emboldened Assad because no red lines was, was drawn. Uh, so he used tanks and no one said anything. Then he used heavy artillery and no one said anything. Then he used helicopter gunships and no one said anything. Then he used mix. In this kind of conditions, you cannot sustain uh, a nonviolent momentum. The rebellion under these conditions turned violent. Uh, and uh, that only increased the fears of the minority groups from change. Groups became more radicalized. The goodwill that people had in the beginning towards the United States and the West because they hoped that they will come to their rescue and, and to their aid and to their succor, all of this goodwill evaporated. So at, this is the unfortunate aspect because it, was, it started as a protest movement that wanted to open a new page with the rest of the world and especially with openness to the West. And now we are, we are back and sort of we fell back on the tendencies of anti-Americanism. It's unfortunate that the international community have played a very negative role in allowing this kind of deterioration. Nonviolence as an ethos, as an ethos, does not work when there is indifference, and it does not work when uh, the other side succeed in, in, in demonizing you. The ethos of nonviolence is aimed at striking at the human side of, of your enemies, basically, of the other side. You're rebelling against a dictator, but at the same time you're trying to appeal to the human side of many of his supporters. And at the same time you're trying to appeal to the human side of the observers, of those who are outside, blocking in, and who have a stake in the matter, or simply out of sense of decency they will decide to back the nonviolent movement and try to put pressure on the dictator in order to help this movement achieve its goals. But when there is international indifference and continued cold calculations that simply look at this situation and say, we are not concerned with this, and when the other side the, that you're trying to appeal to, the dictatorial side, looks at the situation and, and manages to demonize you, you and use the sectarian card and play on sectarian fears, then that creates an irrational mindset where uh, people simply don't care about your humanity anymore.